Welcome to Food Allergy and Your Kiddo with Dr. Alice Hoyt, the podcast about demystifying food allergies, diminishing allergy anxiety, and taking back control. Let's navigate this challenge together with evidence-based information, scientific research, and tried and proven practices. And now, here's your host, board-certified allergist and immunologist specializing in food allergy, Dr. Alice Hoyt. Hello, and welcome to the Food Allergy and Your Kiddo podcast. I am your host, Dr. Alice Hoyt, dropping in for a solo episode today, and one that will be on the shorter side, um, and one that is not really focused on food allergy. And that is because, yes, I am an allergist, but I'm not your allergist, as we say in this show, and as some of my patients like to tease me, because they are my patients, But I get asked a lot about, Dr. Hoyt, how can I manage my seasonal allergies? Or I'll bump into a girlfriend in a grocery store and, you know, she just has the puffy face and she's like, oh, my allergies. And so I wanted to share with everybody um, what my go-to is for seasonal allergy symptoms. And I think it's going to surprise some of y'all. Um, so it, it really is a three-step plan with a bonus step that I highly recommend. And you're not going to be surprised when you hear what that bonus step is. But step number one to really managing the itchy, drippy, sneezy symptoms that come along with having seasonal allergies is to use a nasal rinse. What a nasal rinse does is it helps get all of that yucky pollen, dust mite, dander, all the yucky stuff that's all up in your face, activating those mast cells, causing all that itchy, drippy, sneezy, all those symptoms that make you feel so bad, getting all of that stuff out of your nasal passages. And a good and safe way to do that, my go-to, is called Simply Saline. Okay, I should have opened this show by saying I have no endorsements from any of these companies that I'm about to talk about. But I really like Simply Saline. It is a saline mist, and it's already sterile, so it's already in um, a little bottle it, it, at the pharmacy, it's usually towards the bottom shelf, and there's usually Simply Saline, and then um, there might be one other brand, and there might be a generic fa- brand, like a Walgreens brand. And really, you you use the saline to to rinse out the yucky stuff in your nose. So um, you can lean your head forward or back or however it is you feel most comfortable doing this. Most people lean their heads back and they spray the mist um, while they're in the shower. Very, very, very easy. And they really just want to to get all of that yucky stuff out of their noses. And so when you spray it in, it should also come out. Um, Some people are very talented and they could actually have it come out the other side of their nose. Anyway, this this is getting a little bit, um, it, you can use your imagination, <laughs> but it really does. It gets all of the yucky stuff out of your face. And ultimately, you know, allergists talk about allergen avoidance to prevent reactions. Well, if the allergen is just sitting there in your face, then it's just going to continue to activate those allergy cells. Um, and we want to first get the junk out of our faces. I want to reiterate the importance of the solution being sterile, meaning simply saline is sterile. It is sterilized. The manufacturer makes it that way. You don't want to just use tap water that has not been boiled and then cooled to rinse out your your nasal passages, your sinus passages, um, because that water could actually have um, be some have some contamination to it. Even though our water supply is very safe, um, it can still have some contamination and that could put you at risk for some very serious infections. So you can use a neti pot if you like that, but you definitely want to use a sterile, uh, sterile, sterile water. Step number two is after you've really rinsed out, rinsed out your nasal passages is you want to deliver really, really effective medication right to the source of the inflammation 
And that is where your nasal steroid spray comes in. A lot of people really underestimate the power of a nasal steroid spray. The whole idea behind nasal steroid sprays is that it delivers that really potent steroid medication right to the site of the inflammation, as opposed to having to take a steroid pill every day or multiple times per day, or having a steroid shot or whatever the case may be, because We all know that steroids are powerful and they can really calm down inflammation, but they can also cause a lot of nasty side effects, not just the short-term increase in hunger, uh, change in moods, but also longer-term really impeding bone strength, um, changing actually the shape of your body, really causing a a dependence on these medications, and it can actually be quite dangerous and, and really destroy lives. So it's really fantastic that modern medicine has, has allowed us to develop these get, get right, right to the heart of the matter, steroid nose sprays, and they're not all created equally. So my favorite one is called Flonase Scentsy Mist. That one is the Flonase with the blue cap as opposed to the green cap. And again, I don't have any sort of endorsement from any of these companies. But the one with the blue cap, Flonase Scentsy Mist, it sprays more like a gentle mist as opposed to a squirt. And it also doesn't have that that kind of um, taste smell that some of the other nasal steroid sprays have or any of the other nasal sprays in general have. Um, and so I, I like that one because it's more of a mist. It's, it's, it, it just feels better when you're using it. And so if it feels better, then it's easier to use. Um, especially if you're doing this for your kiddo, which brings me to a tip. Always check with your doctor ideally your allergist, about what dose of medication, like the actual microgram or milligram or whatever the medication is, what the dose is. Because sometimes medications are marketed towards to be like a children's version when it's really just a reduced number of sprays or reduced dose of the same medication in adults. So it's always important to talk with your doctor about this, but I find sometimes you can get certain medications on sale, like Flonase Sensi Mist, um, and maybe the children's version isn't on sale, but <laughs> it's really just a difference of doing two sprays or one spray, at least at the time of the podcast, this podcast recording it is. But check with your doctor about what the actual dose of the medication is. I also just think it's important for us all to be informed on what we're actually putting into our bodies or our kiddos' bodies and know the dosage. Um, and so so that's a tip. Also, um, to go along with this point number two, a nasal steroid spray is different than medications like Afrin. Afrin is a medication that actually, it is not a nasal steroid spray. Um, it is not an antihistamine spray. It is a medication that actually causes the blood vessels to tighten up. And when blood vessels are tightened up, that means they're not leaking out fluid. You know, I I keep saying seasonal allergies, itchy, drippy, sneezy. That drippy part, a lot of that comes from mucus production, also comes from your blood vessels being sort of leaky in, in your face. And that comes from that mast cell activation that we've talked about on the show, allergy cells getting activated, sending out chemicals that cause your blood vessels to kind of get bigger and, and leakier. And, and that's where a lot of that congestion comes from. And so some of these medications like Afrin, what they do is they actually cause those blood vessels to tighten up. And that's why you get like such immediate, like, oh, I'm not congested anymore. But with that comes a pretty nasty rebound, meaning a few hours later, you can get a flood of congestion, just really feeling terrible. So then you use it again and, and then it it helps, but then it it goes away, the, the relief goes away. And so you see how people can actually become dependent on these medications and that can be very dangerous. It can be hard to, to get people off of these medications. Um, and so 
avoid those medications unless you're using them for very, very targeted reasons, for very limited reasons. And also when you are using something like an Afrin um, or the red eye eye drops, just also know that, okay, there there is a chance that I'm going to feel worse at some point. So, I mean, if you have a presentation, if, you know, fill in the blank, you have a reason like you need some quick relief, talk with your doctor about very targeted use of these medications. But again, that's not a nasal steroid spray. I also want to point out that it's really important to use nasal steroid sprays with the correct technique. And the nice thing about the Flonase Sensi Mist is that when you open up the packaging, it does have a really nice illustration of how to use it. But ultimately, you don't want to point the the bottle towards the middle of your nose because that can cause a lot of irritation and damage to to the bone in your nose. Um, so. If you're going to use this medication, talk with your doctor about it and also definitely look at the the package insert that comes with it because it's going to be very helpful to showing you how to use the medication properly. So my tip number one was to rinse, rinse, rinse all the yucky stuff out of your face. My tip number two is to use a nasal steroid spray. Tip number three, which is probably what everybody um, else is doing first, and this is sort of the the last thing I do, is take an antihistamine, um, like Claritin, Allegra, Zyrtec, those medications. Um, the reason it's it's low on my list is because my tip number one is to, to, to help with allergen avoidance, is to get it all out of my face to stop the reaction from happening in the first place, right? So that's really important. Tip number two, the nasal steroid spray, that helps stop any current inflammation and prevent onset of new inflammation. So so that's a really awesome thing. And tip number three, antihistamines can be very, very helpful, but they're really not the be-all, end-all, or really the first-line therapy for allergic rhinitis um, because they they just tackle the histamine. They, they don't do a whole lot more than that. Um, now that said, that histamine is a very annoying chemical and it can make you feel really, really yucky. And so it is awesome that we have these types of medications available to us as well. Um, so I, I do certainly value them, but I, I don't want to undervalue that nasal steroid spray and the power of just getting that stuff out of your face, which is what you do with the, with the rinse. And so for your antihistamines, Medications, specifically Allegra and Claritin, they are, um, they're non-sedating. Zyrtec is a little bit sedating, um, but if you ever are feeling like, oh, you know, I thought, I thought the Zyrtec was non-sedating, but I feel kind of tired, like you're not alone. What some people do is they, they'll try different ones, see which one works for them. Or some people feel like one might start work, stop working after a little while. There's not a whole lot of evidence on that, but you know what? All of our bodies respond to medications differently. So what I'll recommend folks do is, is do a, a, I call it a carousel, um, of, you know, do Allegra for a week or two and then switch over to the Claritin for a week or two. And then if they like Zyrtec, Zyrtec for a week or two to to really if they feel like freshening up the regimen helps them then of course I want to help them and there's absolutely no harm in doing that so I also want to touch on why not to do Benadryl Benadryl has been around a long time and it is a potent antihistamine but what it also does two two things that are not great about Benadryl one it's pretty short half-life meaning it doesn't last very long. Claritin, Allegra, Zyrtec, those can last most, if not all of the day, if not 24 hours. But Benadryl, pretty short acting. The second thing about Benadryl is that it crosses the blood-brain barrier, and that is why it causes the drowsiness that it causes. But the bummer about that is it's not like, oh yeah, I'm going to take some Benadryl and get some good sleep. Um, No, because Crossing the blood-brain barrier, it impedes the ability of the brain to go into REM sleep, or it, it doesn't let you get that really good sleep that, that allows your body to be refreshed. And so when you wake up the next morning, a lot, or after your nap, or whatever the case may be, like you don't really feel refreshed. <laughs> and that's because even though your body has been asleep, your mind has not so much been resting. So... My tip number three is 
antihistamines, selecting the right antihistamines, and again, check with your doctor for the right dose, just like you're going to check with your doctor about your dose of nasal steroid spray, and of course, to make sure that any of these tips are right for you. And so that brings me to my bonus tip, which you're not going to be surprised about. My bonus tip is to see an allergist. Allergists are able to help determine what your triggers are, not what your neighbor's triggers are, not what your mom's triggers are, but what your triggers are, what your kiddo's triggers are. And what's so powerful about identifying your triggers is that you are then able to try to avoid certain triggers and and not by just living in a bubble, but by, okay, if I know I'm a grass pollen allergic person, then I know when the grass pollen counts are high because we all have those apps on our phones, then I know to make sure I'm taking my regimen. Um, I know I need to rinse out my nose when I come inside. And the nice thing about knowing what you're allergic to is that you know what seasons you need to take certain medication. And this allows you to not be taking medication all the time that you don't really need to take. I just think there's so much power in knowing what your diagnosis is, meaning is it allergic rhinitis due to pollen? If so, which pollens? Your allergist can help you with that. Also, allergy shots are a tremendous blessing to people because they are able to actually teach your immune system to tolerate these allergens so that you don't go through these days of misery anymore and so that you don't have to take so much medication too. So they can be very, very, very helpful. If you have not seen an allergist, then of course I recommend you see an allergist. I don't think that surprises anybody that that's my bonus tip. Okay, so recap. Tip number one, rinse out your nose. Always use sterile product. And again, that's why I just like the Simply Saline because Simply Saline is already sterile. I don't have to worry about it any sort of infection. It's it's sterile. It's super easy to use. I can just keep it under my cabinet. Number two, nasal steroid spray, the correct dose for you or your kiddo. You're going to check with your doctor on all of these things. Um, and then also the antihistamine that's going to work best for you. And that bonus point of see an allergist so that you can get the best, best possible treatment plan for you. That's the episode. Thanks so much for tuning in. Of course, I'm an allergist, but I'm not your allergist. So talk with your allergist about what you learned on this episode and visit us at foodallergyandyourkiddo.com where you can submit your family's questions. God bless you and God bless your family. (laughs) 